As medical students, it is crucial to recognise and work within the limits of our competence. However, most students will come across challenging situations on their clinical placement where it is not obvious how best to do so. In this video, we will show three example scenarios similar to those that students are likely to experience, each followed by four options of how the medical student could respond. We encourage you to pause the video and consider which option best demonstrates the student recognising and working within the limits of their competence. If possible, watch the scenarios with fellow medical students and engage in active discussions about the different options. The more perspectives, the better. For each of the three scenarios, we have provided an example of a constructive conversation between medical students about the different options. Thank you for letting me have a listen to your chest. Um, I know it's quite early in the morning for you as well. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Oh yeah, no worries at all. Um, I just... Over the last few days I've been feeling a bit worse and I don't know if you heard anything just then that could explain it but I, I haven't really, I don't know if the doctors know that I like I feel a bit more short of breath and like I've been coughing a lot more um, and I don't know if you heard anything that would help explain that at all. Option one, I think that's a decent response given that um, hospital acquired pneumonia is a reasonable differential diagnosis. Yeah, I mean, I think I'd probably agree with the diagnosis, but I don't think it's acceptable for an unsupervised student to give a diagnosis directly to a patient. Mm, I think, yeah, actually, you're right. I think the GMC guidelines state very clearly that a student's not allowed to treat um, or diagnose any patients without supervision. Yeah, I mean, and the option doesn't even indicate that the student plans to involve any seniors or seek senior input, which, I mean, if there's a chance the patient's unwell, is really important to do. Mm, for sure. Yeah, so in situations like this, the student should definitely com communicate any um, patient concerns or any findings from the examination to doctors on the ward. Yeah. Um, so what about the second option then? Yeah, I mean, I do like that this option involves communicating uh, important information to a senior doctor, but I'm not sure it would raise concerns quick enough. I mean, after all, we know from experience how long ward rounds can take. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. I think the student should definitely make um, a priority to timely raise any concerns from the patient interaction. Um, and liaise with doctors if there's any, even a slight chance that the patient is acutely unwell or deteriorating um, to ensure patient safety. Yeah, I mean, patient safety is definitely the priority. Um, so surely the third option is a good one because it involves quickly reporting the concerns to doctors. Mm, yeah, the timeliness of this option is definitely good. Um, but I'm not sure if the student's qualified to simply determine and present a diagnosis. Actually, that's a good point. And even if the student did interpret the patient's concerns and examination of findings accurately, which I mean they might not have without supervision, um, they still have not got the necessary investigations to diagnose hospital-acquired pneumonia, and they wouldn't be able to alone. And it's not just beyond their competence, um, but even if the diagnosis was correct, the student does not know the timescale of his deterioration and cannot assume that the doctors on the ward are unaware of their presentation. Yeah, you're right. Presenting concerns as if they definitely indicate an acute presentation that requires immediate treatment is not effective clear communication and actually cause, could cause more harm than good. Mm. Yeah, it would be better for the student to notify the doctors of their examination findings and the patient's report of concerns, obviously, and ascertain whether this is something that they've been monitoring over time or this is something new. Um, so, surely the fourth option is best. Absolutely. I mean, as well as demonstrating effective communication and teamwork, which are essential for medical students, in this option, the student appropriately raises concerns regarding patient safety, but without overstepping their competence. I'm sorry you've not been feeling very well. Um, I did hear some noises in the lungs, which might maybe explain why you're not feeling so well. Yeah. I'm a medical student, um, so I'll definitely talk to the doctors, yeah. let them know, and make sure they come and speak to you about that. Okay. Because we, yeah. we want you to get better and make yeah. sure there's nothing going on. Yeah, come in. Hey, doctor. How's it going on the ward today? Hey, um, yeah, it's been really, really busy. It's been so much work, and it's, it's all a bit hectic here. Yeah. Sounds rough. Is there any I can do to help out? Um, let me think. I think in room four, Miss Adams been spiking up temperatures, and we're looking to do a, a blood culture for her. If you're having to go, um, the, the bottles are just over there. Yeah. Although the medical student can perform venipuncture, blood cultures are not a skill that they have been trained in yet. Please note, the skills trained and the stage at which this happens differs between different medical schools. Uh, so starting with the first option, um, I think it's a good option because yeah. then the student is helping out and then, you know, fully contributing to the healthcare team and, you know, they feel included. I think it's a great option. Yeah, I guess, on the other hand, though, the student's still doing a skill that they're not properly mm -hmm. trained in, even if they're helping out. I know what you mean, because like, I suppose a blood culture is... You know, it's an invasive procedure, and if they don't do it well, it could lead to complications like an infection or 
hematoma, things like that. Yeah, and yeah. I, especially because the student's unsupervised, that's even more likely to happen. So I guess we should look at the second option, uh, which seems a lot better because they're asking for the right supervision, but I suppose they're still doing something they're not trained to do. Yeah, no, that's true. So option three seems like the best option to me um, mm. because the student follows the GMC guidelines and they yeah. don't do a skill that they don't, um, they're not competent in. Yeah. And they do explain to the medical team like why that is. And that, that's true. And they're still offering to help out and they're still fully contributing to the healthcare team by doing that. So I think that's good. But I suppose we should still look at option four. Yeah, I like this option. Mm -hmm. It shows that the student wants to check their understanding before they um, go and carry out the procedure, which mm -hmm. is good. Yeah. However, I guess this still doesn't and um, replace the proper supervision or the proper training of the skill. Yeah, I, I agree, definitely. That, but it's really important to remember as well that if we ever feel pressured um, to do something that's out of our competency or you're being asked more than once or more than a few times um, to do something that's out of your competency, it's really important to be able to raise this concern with the medical school. Yeah, no, yeah. that's so true. Mm. So I guess we both agree that option three is the best option. Yeah, I think. Unfortunately, as a fifth year medical student, I'm not qualified to do blood cultures. If there's any other way to help out, I would love to do that. Uh, please just let me know. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Thanks for letting me examine you. Um, have you got any questions that you, you got from me or anything you'd like me to pass on to the doctors? Yeah, doctor, I've actually got a question for you about this angina I've got. So they said it's because of my smoking, but I'm wondering if you could tell me what the actual specific odds are that I'm gonna have a heart attack. Will I definitely get a heart attack? Because, you know, it's not very easy for me to stop. I don't find it very easy and I don't want to, um, but I don't want to have a heart attack either. To me, this seems like a fairly reasonable choice because, I mean, explaining the risks of smoking and sort of counselling on smoke cessation would be useful for the patient. Mm -hmm. And it is something that medical students are probably quite comfortable doing. I mean, you mm -hmm. practice it fairly early on in your degrees, so... That's true, uh, especially if the student gives accurate general advice instead of individual specific uh, medical advice True. but unfortunately this option doesn't clarify the student's position as a medical student and not a doctor which is not acceptable yeah of course you're right i mean the gmc guidelines are very clear that it's essential for students uh, mm -hmm. to clarify that they're not yet medical professionals yeah. which is particularly important in this case because as i recall the patient actually called the student doctor in that case, the second option looks better, as the student clearly states their position and clarifies that they're not qualified to give medical advice. That's true, but just because they can't give specific medical advice doesn't mm -hmm. mean they can't try and help and you know give what they can to the patient, whether that's sort of more general information about smoking these risks, yeah. or even just expressing empathy with a challenging situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. actually I agree, and the response is quite abrupt, which could be perceived as dismissive, and it risks the patient not feeling like they could ask any further questions if mm. they have them. And I guess on top of that, the student may not be obliged to answer any specific questions, but by not contributing to the best of their abilities, it, it may actually increase the burden on the rest of the healthcare team. Agreed. I mean, teamwork is a really important part of the GMC guidelines. Mm. So what about the third option then? I mean, they clearly state they're a medical student and they address the patient's question. Unfortunately, the student gives specific medical advice to the patient, which they're not qualified to do. And on top of that, the medical advice is incorrect. I mean, giving flawed medical advice goes completely against GMC guidelines. Um, and even if it was accurate, the response is given without any empathy. Yeah. yeah. And good communication is really important. I would feel pretty terrible if yeah. I had this answer in response to my question. So surely the fourth option is the best one. Agreed. I mean, they clarify they're a medical student um, and that they're not able to give any specific medical advice but they address the patient concerns to the best of their ability by giving useful general information mm. uh, and offering to involve the doctor for more specific advice. Exactly, they mm. work within their competence, they help the patient feel validated after asking their question, and they go out of their way to help the patient and the healthcare team. Great. Um, that's a very fair concern. Um, so quitting smoking is definitely beneficial to uh, lower the risk of you having a, a heart attack. Um, however, I'd like to clarify very quickly that I'm a medical student, um, so I'm not actually able to give you any specific advice regarding your case. However, um, if you'd like, I can, I can go ask one of the doctors um, to come have a chat with you a bit more, if you want to know a bit more about your condition, uh, if you'd like that. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks. I hope you found the three scenarios in this video useful for thinking about how you as a medical student should follow the GMC guidelines and practice within your competence within everyday life as a medical student. This is not an exhaustive list of scenarios and you may wish to read more of the GMC guidelines on this topic.